Hello, I'm Matt Galloway, and this is The Current Podcast. Well, Justin Trudeau's hold on power got a bit shakier yesterday as Jagmeet Singh announced the NDP was ending its supply and confidence agreement with the Liberals. Justin Trudeau has proven again and again he will always cave to corporate greed. The Liberals have let people down. They don't deserve another chance. This deal has been in place since March of 2022. It was supposed to last until next June, just the latest blow to the Liberal government, which has been struggling with weak poll numbers and internal strife. Joining me now in our Montreal studio is Anthony Housefather. He is a prominent Montreal area Liberal MP and the federal government's special advisor on Jewish community relations and anti-Semitism. Anthony Housefather, good morning. Hey, thanks for coming to Montreal, Matt. I'm really glad to be here, and I'm really glad to have you in studio. Thank you for being here. Um, let's start with the collapse of this agreement with the NDP. When's the election going to be? I don't know that this materially changes when the election will be. I mean, I, I think in the end it means that there's not a certainty that the NDP will vote with the government on confidence motions. There's not that many confidence motions that usually come before the House. I don't know that the NDP wants a quick election, and uh, and I guess we'll see. It means the government will have to work with one of the three parties in the House uh, when there is a confidence vote. The suggestion is um, there's been reporting that the government only found out about this just as the deal, uh, as the news was breaking, as the video that, that Jagmeet Singh recorded went up on social media. What does that tell you about the state of this relationship such as it is? Well, I mean, I think it shows poor form if that's the case. I, I, I think in the end result, right, one of the things that you see here is really harsh criticism by the NDP of a government that they were in this agreement with for two years. And the last uh, couple of years, they've been claiming credit for a number of the achievements of the government that were actually Liberal Party positions to begin with. Um, I, I think that people need to remember that this was not a coalition, as Pierre Polyev tries to pretend. Mm -hmm. There are very stark differences between the Liberals and NDP on many policy issues. We have some things that we agree on, many things we don't. Um, and then there's a broad range of people within the Liberal Party um, as well. We're, uh, we're a party that has uh, a wide coalition, and, and, and I think that this agreement was what it was. It was saying that we would get dental care done, we'd get pharma care done, and that they would vote with us on confidence votes. It was nothing more. Is Justin Trudeau still the right person to be leading the Liberal Party? Well, that's something Justin Trudeau will need to need to decide. From your perspective, is he the right person to be leading your party? Look, Justin Trudeau um, led our party back from oblivion in 2015. And what I would say is that any advice I give Justin Trudeau will be done in private. And I think that it's up to him to make that decision. Do you have confidence in him as the leader of the party? While he's leader of the party, of course I have confidence in him. I have confidence in anybody who is going to be leading the party. Um, I think Justin Trudeau has a lot of wonderful qualities that Canadians have, you know, somewhat in the last few years forgotten about. The concern, though, I mean, you use the word oblivion. The concern, if you follow the polls, such as they are, um, is that the party could be headed back toward oblivion. 84% of the country, according to Abacus, is looking for change. Mm -hmm. The liberals trail the conservatives by close to 20 points. The Conservatives lead among all voter groups in all parts of the country except Quebec, where the Liberals are fighting the Conservatives for second place behind the bloc. What will that mean? I mean, if, if you, you say that the decision is in his hands, there are real concerns, and you hear this from within the party, um, about whether he is the right person to be there. How is that going to resolve itself? Well, it's going to resolve himself by him listening to members of caucus and Canadians and, and making that decision. Uh, you know, in the end, to me, the decision is his to make, um, and, uh, and, that's, and, and that's where things are. One thing that I have to remind everybody is that the party, of course, any party, is far more than its leader. Mm -hmm. And we in Canadian, in Canadian politics too often look at a leader-centric approach where you have a vast team in a party with very different views and very different you know, in very different opinions. And too often we ignore, and MPs themselves often fail to recognize the power that they themselves have, uh, which you have, you know, in the United States and the UK. Um, and more often than not, I think Canadians are forgetting that their own MPs, the person they elect in their riding, is their representative, and they should be looking at them and, and their actions and their votes um, in terms of deciding on their votes in the next election. Why are you still in the party? You yourself have had really difficult conversations. You talked about a painful uh, discussion with the prime minister himself, but I know conversations with people in community as well about whether you were still welcome in the Liberal Party or whether the Liberal Party was your place to be. Why are you still in this party? Because overall, I'm a liberal, right? I don't believe that, I, that any party is perfect. I don't believe that any party shares 
my views on every issue. But on most issues, you know, whether you look at the right of a woman to access choice, whether you look at the rights of the LGBTQ plus community, whether you look at uh, wider issues such as my belief that you need to help the more poor and vulnerable in society, I, I, I'm more of a liberal, but I also believe in centrism. I also believe in pragmatism. I also believe in a strong defense and a strong military. I also believe that, you know, that, that, that we need to get our railways moving. And, and I supported, for example, the government's decision uh, last week to uh, push the railways uh, and the workers to binding arbitration. But th th those aren't the issues that put you in that difficult conversation with the prime minister. The issue largely was about... I mean, there's a, a mayor in the town of Hampstead, which is in your writing, who said that Justin Trudeau has, in his words, tremendously failed Jews. Is, is, is he right in saying that? No, he, he's not right. I, I think that, that, again, that's personalization of an issue. Um, what I hate the most about our politics is those people that yell and scream and, and attack people um, and say horrible things about them. Most people are in good faith. Jewish communities across the world feel that governments at all levels have let them down, whether federal, whether provincial, whether state, whether local. What does that look like in this country? It, Again, the Jewish community is not a monolith. There are many different parts of that community. But in the conversations that you've had, what does that mean to be let down by levels of government? Oh, I think the Jewish community is, is, is pretty united in viewing, and this is not just in Canada, it's all around the world, in viewing that there have been demonstrations in the streets targeting Jewish businesses. There have been demonstrations that have blocked access to Jewish community centers, including here in Montreal at the Federation Building, and targeted synagogues. Um, there, there have been incidents on campus that are completely unacceptable. And I think the vast, vast, vast majority of Jewish Canadians feel that universities, feel that local governments, feel that the provinces, feel that the federal government have not done enough to ensure their safety here in Canada. And that is part of what I have been working on to make sure that Jewish Canadians also understand that politicians, most politicians, are of good faith. They want to quell anti-Semitism in Canada. They want to make sure that these issues are dealt with just like everywhere else in the world, they're not used to this wave of anti-Semitism that has swept across the world, and, and they're not dealing with it as effectively, perhaps, as they can. I think we're doing better, and I think we're going to keep doing better. How divided is your party on this? I mean, w when you were named to this role as a special advisor on Jewish community relations and anti-Semitism, a member of your caucus publicly opposed your appointment. There's a by-election that's coming up in Quebec, and a group of liberal, liberal staffers are refusing to campaign because... They are unhappy with the government's handling of Israel. How, how, how divided is the Liberal Party so right now? So I think on this issue? there's two different questions. One of the questions is on the conflict in the Middle East and what's happening in Israel and Gaza. I think there is great division in Canadian society and great division in the Liberal Party. Um, on the issue of anti Semitism and quelling anti Semitism in Canada, there should be no divisions in our party on that. What, is it, what does it tell you when staffers are saying that they don't want to work? This is a crucial by-election in a liberal stronghold, such as it would be, um, and that the staffers are saying that they don't want to be involved in this because they have real issue with, with how the government has handled this war. Well, I mean, I don't think that staffers have, I, I think it's unacceptable for staffers to do that. I, I think, again, what does it staff, tell you, what does it tell staff, you though? Well, again, what it, what it tells me is that there's a group of people who are publicly saying that they don't want to work in a by-election that, that, you know, I, I don't think many of them were actually working on. Um, everybody has a right in the Liberal Party to say what they, they believe, but this is staffers. Staffers are at work for politicians. And they're supposed to reflect the views of the politicians that they serve. Um, it is certainly their right to say something, but if they feel so strongly about it, I don't know that the, what they did was the appropriate way to do it. Leaking something to the media is, is not usually the appropriate way for staffers to deal with issues, but I'll let the people who are their bosses deal with that. To me, the issue is, like most Canadians, I have strong views on the issue. Um, in the Liberal Party, there are people that represent all of Canada, and it brings a, a different dynamic in the Liberal Party than you have in some other parties where you have less of a right to be different. What have the last 11 months been like for you? We were just chatting as you came in about this and about being in this role um, and being a prominent member of the community and speaking out. What, is, what, what, is, what have the last 11 months been like for you? I mean, 
they've been difficult in the sense that I think Jewish communities around the world and the vast majority of Jewish Canadians have had a very difficult time being scared and, 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 and frightened about what's happening in Israel, where many of us have friends, family members, etc. Um, being even more nervous about what's happening in Canada, where we see the rise of anti-Semitism, although, again, that's, that's everywhere in the world. Um, and for me as a politician, um, getting the hate that I get for vocalizing and being loud about the views that I think most of my community holds. Um, do, you feel, it, do you feel personally threatened? I, I mean, I have been. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think that it would be a lie to say that I, I, I don't feel that there's been a multitude of threats. Uh, so, so sure, I feel threatened. Do I feel unsafe? That it would be a different question. Mm -hmm. I, I always have reconciled the fact that I believe that this small vocal minority is a small vocal minority. I, I believe that the vast majority of Canadians support our fight against anti-Semitism and, and, and are on the side of Canada's Jewish community. And, 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 but it, it, it's been a hard time. It's been a very hard time for me, and not only just for me, but for other other, other Jewish politicians in Canada and, and, and around the world. You, you've argued that some of the pro-Palestinian protests in Canada, um, including on university campuses here in, in the city of Montreal, have crossed into anti-Semitism. Where are you drawing the line on that? The line is where you are yelling and screaming things that you know Jewish communities feel are targeting them in a, in a way that, 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 that is unacceptable. For example, telling Jews to go back to Poland or go back to Yemen, that has been a constant refrain at some of the demonstrations in Montreal, is clearly anti-Semitic. Using words like antifada, antifada, and from the river to the sea, are words that Jews see as endorsing the killing of Jewish civilians in Israel and wiping Israel off the face of the map. If your real goal is a two-state solution, which I strongly support, if your goal is a ceasefire, and you understand that Jewish communities feel that those words are targeting them and hurtful, to say the least, then you should find other words to use. And those demonstrators that are purposely using those words, those demonstrators that are purposely calling for the boycotts of Jewish businesses, that are saying that Zionists have no place in their space, that's unacceptable. The vast majority of Jews in Canada are Zionists. It just means we believe Israel has a right to exist. Many non-Jews are Zionists. You, you, can't, you can't use broad terminology like that and attack people for, for who they are. We've spoken, obviously, with a number of people who are involved in, in protesting Israel's actions in the war, some of them from Jewish communities, um, who have said that, that what they're doing is not anti-Semitic, um, that they, they, they push back very strongly on that. And I just wonder what you say to Palestinian supporters who feel that the civilian losses in Gaza aren't being adequately considered by um, the supporters of the state of Israel. Um, I think that we all believe that all of these losses are tragic and, 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 and horrible. Anytime a civilian is killed anywhere, it's tragic and horrible. I think the difference is that support of Israel will point to Hamas, the terrorist organization that controls Gaza, that uses civilians as human shields, um, and that started this war on October the 7th, massacring 1,200 Israelis and holding people hostage and brutally murdering six hostages last, last weekend and would tie them to a greater share of the responsibility uh, than the pro-Palestinian side. But, but what I do want to say, Matt, is I don't feel that it's anti-Semitic. Never, never have I said that to protest in favor of a Palestinian state or to call out what you feel is Israeli government actions. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that targeting Jews in Canada that, that yelling horrible words that Jews consider to be anti-Semitic and awful is okay. You can yell other things at your demonstrations. You, you, cannot do in, you, can, you can avoid doing encampments that say no Zionists wanted in this space on public university grounds. What is it going to take 11 months into this war and the horror that, that has unfolded? What is it going to take... Um, to have Canadians who have really deep feelings, who are really entrenched in where they are, to get them to find some, not common ground, but at the very least some sort of shared humanity and get people to talk to each other. Do you know what I mean? What is that going to take? Because that feels to some people like it's really far away. I mean, I think that the views are divergent. It doesn't mean that we don't talk. Uh, really? I mean, I, 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 
I, I mean, it depends who you're talking about. If you're talking about absolutely extreme positions, I'm not going to talk to somebody that says the state of Israel has no right to exist. Or, I mean, or back and forth. I mean, it, I mean it feels as though, but, again, maybe that's on the polls of, of right. Of this if debate. you're not on the polls, and I don't feel that I'm on a poll, mm-hmm. I, I'm not somebody that demeans people for no reason. Like this, like I don't insult, I don't attack viscerally, I don't personally insult anybody. Um, I think there is discussion and dialogue, but I think it's hard. But it, but it exists. That, that, that where we can, I hope, always agree is there should be no hate in Canada as a result of what's happening in the Middle East. And yet, but there is, and that's what people, I mean, it's it's not to diminish certainly what's happening there, but here, people are really worried about what's unfolding here. I I do agree that with that, and that's what I've been talking about, right? The Jewish community in Canada is deeply concerned that Jews in Canada are being targeted constantly for the actions of the state of Israel in the same way that Palestinians in Canada, that Arabs in Canada, that Muslims in Canada shouldn't be targeted by the actions of Hamas or Hezbollah or any Muslim government. Jews in Canada shouldn't be targeted by Israel uh, for for Israeli government actions. And yet it seems to keep happening. Um, And I think we should be trying to agree that we need to leave the hate off of Canadian streets. And that means that these demonstrations targeting one in, one in another community have to stop. you confident that that's going to happen? I mean... A- am I confident that the loud extremist voices will not continue? No. Am I confident that the vast majority of Canadians don't like this? Yes. And am I confident that universities have learned their lessons from what happened last year? Yes. What does that mean, learn their lessons? I think universities that tolerated encampments last year have learned their lesson about not tolerating violations of their code of conduct. I think universities have seen that there was, across the country, a feeling by Jewish faculty, staff, um, and students that they were constantly being targeted in campus and even in, in some ways by professors in some classes. And I think abusive podium... I think the the violation of codes of conduct, I think University of Recognized cannot be tolerated anymore. And, and, and it doesn't mean that you don't have free speech on campus. It doesn't mean that a professor can't have pro-Palestinian views or views, uh, you know, that, 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 but that they, what they can't do in class is say, if you don't agree with my views, you're not welcome in my classroom or you're going to get a bad mark. And has that happened? Uh, that is my understanding that it has happened in a number of places. Mm-hmm. I've, I've met with Jewish student groups across the country uh, who have come and testified in parliament and have had you know, multiple examples of where things have gone awry in campus. And I, think, and I think campus leadership, again, is in good faith, just like governments. They want to do the right thing. They're just, you know, it's hard when, 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 you're, you know, when you're dealing with a situation you're not used to. And I think last year was an unusual situation for everybody. I think all levels of government and I think university groups will do better. Anthony Housefather, I'm really glad to have you here. Um, it's good to have you in studio. This is a, a really precarious issue and with a lot of heat in it. And I hope, to your point, maybe people can talk to each other. We'll see whether that happens in the months to come. Thank you very I much. I hope so as well. Thank you, Matt. Anthony Housefather is a liberal MP for Mount Royal, the federal government's special advisor on Jewish community relations and anti-Semitism. He was with us in our studio in Montreal.